Transfer's all done. Time to crack on with the rest of the season, but some big games ahead of us in the short term, as well as, obviously, trying to get ourselves a maintaining top half finish this year. We don't expect to finish in the playoffs, but we would like to finish in the top half to give ourselves the best possible wage budget for next season whilst anticipating staying in this division, of course, as per the rules. If we finish in a top half position, we will be able to have an increase to our wage budget for next year of about 10%. If we do finish in the playoffs, it's 15%. If we get promoted at all, which is unlikely in this first season, it's 20 to 25%, I believe, off the top of my head. In fact, league position targets, there you go. Plus and minus 10 for top and bottom half. Relegation zone is minus 25%. Playoff spots 15 and automatic spots is 25. A reminder, if you want to download this spreadsheet for your own saves, you can do so. Head to either the YouTube live streaming channel, which is Chesnoid Live, or my Twitch uh, stream, which is twitch.tv for slash Chesnoid Gaming. You can download the spreadsheet and use it for yourselves. Thank you for your continued feedback in the comment section. One thing got a lot of traction in the uh, most recent episodes, which was this comment from Bob about you guys leaving your comments in the comment section for me to utilize as part of a press conference for moving for episodes moving forward. Now, obviously, I record a few episodes ahead of time, so any co any feedback or any uh, questions you leave might not necessarily be implemented in the very next video, but it's absolutely an idea I want to trial, and obviously, as we move forward, we'll have questions from everyone for each video progressing further forward from here. So if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in the guise of Cambridge United manager, then do leave them in the comments section down below. It's a great idea from Bob, and you guys had a really positive reaction to that. 119 thumbs up and loads of positive comments saying that you really like the idea of doing something like that as well, as well. So, as well, as well. What I'm saying it twice, Chess. So, we shall look to implement that in the short term. If it goes down well, we shall keep it in the long term, as ever. Saying thank you to you guys for your continued support in the comment section so far already. We're saying thank you today to Nathan, Simon and Lewis on the board behind me. We're going to kick off today with the game against Burton. They recently beat us in the Cup, so we're looking to play them now after simming that one and getting some payback. We'll then also play Blackpool away at Bloomfield Rose, because they're a recently relegated championship side. We'd like to play them. And then we'll also play Charlton as they're obviously one of the bigger sides in the division, and simulate recently promoted Leighton Orient and Port Vale, and hopefully pick up some decent points in the meantime. Having a good start to the season, we don't anticipate it to continue. If it does continue, we might tweak the sliders yet further, but we did do some gameplay testing before we started the save. Just get as far as the match date. I don't believe anything else has happened in the finances in that 24-hour period. It should still be Youth Facilities 5K, which is my most recent one. We are all good to go! And all good to go against Burton Albion here at home this time. Antoine Hackford up top. Kyle Hudlin in their front two as well. A player that's been recommended to me in the comments section a number of times. Mainly because he's six foot bloody nine. Absolute monster. They've got a strong squad though at Burton. They're one of the best run teams in the country. But whilst they have a strong squad, they are one of the weaker sides in the division. It's just still a decent team. That's how strong League One is. We are slightly better on paper, though. And hopefully, we'll go and prove that we're slightly better on grass as well. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying the content. Do subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on any more. And come and join me on stream. You can see everything live as well. There will be Formula One content starting tomorrow on the second channel. Starting today on stream from 4pm. So do follow the links in the description to the stream and to the second channel, Chesnoy Plays, if you would like to see the F124 driver career. Good. Plug, plug, plug. Let's go play. Throw a few intercepts. Finds Jack Lancaster, who in real life has been transfer listed by Cambridge United, and we will be replicating that in the uh, gap between seasons one and two. There was a comment in the uh, most recent episode, I believe it was, mentioning Cambridge United's retained list. And that is, as we mentioned, part of, in episode one, one of the rules that we have for the save. We will be implementing Cambridge's retained list from 23-24 into 24-25 in this save. So everyone that was released IRL will be released in this save. And everyone that is, has been placed on the transfer list IRL will be placed on the transfer list in this save. And we will look to keep things as realistic as possible with every single aspect of the save. Be that finances, be that transfers, be that progression through the leagues. You guys are thoroughly enjoying the idea of this save so far and 
to this point the uh, implementation of the idea of this safe so thank you for your continued support great view levels on the first two or three episodes so hoping that continues longer term thank you for the thousand plus likes on episodes one and two as well if we could get that for episode four that'd be great i'd appreciate it gasan needs to get back in the middle really but Soleil's around the outside here we'll take the corner bowler in the way what can we do with danny andrew's left foot here to try and get something from the set piece can we get ourselves an opening goal not yet that's going to fall kindly for me though We'll get to that with Danny Andrew and Soleil. And Soleil. Lancaster. A 1-2 maybe. Jack Lancaster from the edge of the box. It's slightly wide. It's a nice ball into Carl Hudlin. You would imagine with his frame they will try and utilise his height. And Hackford will be the man that's there on the floor to be utilising his pace. But his effort is well saved by Jack Stevens there, which needed to be made. That was destined for the back of the net. Stevens has been very solid for us so far. And we're going to need him to continue to be, as Burton are going to need Hackford to be better in his shooting. Only a couple of shots on target so far in the game, but chances for both sides. Nothing in yet. Continually, we've been very fortunate with the fixture list that we've played a number of the weaker sides in the division in our opening few games. So... If we do win this and keep ourselves in the playoffs, it is more fortuitous than anything else at this particular moment in time, as you may well imagine. And as I've mentioned a few times, we anticipate falling down the table. In fact, Cambridge in real life, as I mentioned in the previous episode, did have a very strong start to the League One season in the season most recently gone. Nice challenge by Digby there. But obviously it kind of all fell apart after the first 10 games or so. And we went from playoffs to relegation zone. But such is life in the lower leagues when every division is so competitive. And even if, I think even if we do somehow manage to get promotion this season from League One to the Championship, because we're restricting the growth of the team and the growth of the squad, then I don't anticipate us going Championship to Premier League for at least two or three seasons. And in fairness, we might even struggle with staying in the Championship if we get up this first year. Very much so. Lancaster has Jordan Cousins, of all people, forward with him here. Brophy will look to deliver this. And Gassan is there! But he can't get the first time shot away. Let's make some changes in this second half. Keen Harper skips around the challenge. And out wide here to Bowler. Burton looking for a way in front here. They started on the back foot. Didn't have much of the ball or many of the chances. But it's been very even since about the half hour mark in this fixture we are trundling towards a scoreless draw at the moment i have actually made a couple of tweaks to the uh, to the sliders to make the ai slightly less error prone in the finish and the pass don't know as that was a factor in that particular goal but burton albion lead here at the cladara abbey stadium i think it was antoine hackford burying the ball into the back of the net to give the Brewers the advantage here. Good passing, flowing movement. And then just a strong finish. All right, game on. We might be about to lose for the first time since the opening day. I've made a couple of changes. I might bring on Fajiri if Gassan can't find a way through in the short term. Jordan Cousins looking for Elias Kuchunga, however, and he might find a way through here. It's a great turn. It's a decent effort. Croken with the save and... I just got stuck on the defender and not able to attack the second ball. A chance for an equaliser, unable to be taken. Looking for Brophy, looking for Andrews onside here. Danny Andrew driving towards the box. Fajiri Okunabiri is off the bench here. Fajiri is found. Fajiri has his shot blocked by a defender. Digby wins that well. Danny Andrew can't get it under control, but can Kuchunga, can Kuchunga win it back? Kuchunga. Can't do it. Can Liam Bennett get to that though? No. Ryan Bennett will get to that, however. It wasn't a great first touch. I'm going to spread this to Danny Andrew. And if Faye can make me the right run, we could slot him in. Jerry Okunabiri. Back to James Brophy. There's room inside here for Jordan Cousins. Digby's going to push forward. I've got support in the box as well. For Jerry spins and can't get past the man. It was good build up until the final moment. And it was that final moment where I needed. A little bit of extra quality. We are to lose at home to Burton Albion. Not a great result, but certainly a sign that 
we're not going to have things all our own way this season. We'll have to pick ourselves up and go again midweek now, away from home against a significantly better Blackpool team. We have our first Youth Scout back. Now, we're looking for... Holy moly, Sam Forrest. We're looking for players that fit every possible position in our youth squad as we look to build a genuine youth team and youth 11. And, well, these look like decent starts. I initially had a ruling of I wasn't going to sign any youth players that had potential of higher than 10 ratings higher than my current highest rated player, if you followed that. But you guys weren't sure whether that was the, really the right thing to do. We just need to be manually selective rather than have a specific rule. So I'm quite happy to be manually selective. I'm also quite happy for all of these players to have another uh, month's scouting go into them. Harley Chambers is a, uh, a goalkeeper that we can call up though. For £425, Harley Chambers. I might hold off and wait and see if there's anyone better actually. We will of course factor in youth players' wages into our wage budget as we would have to do. But at the moment, with Barden in on loan and Stevens our number one and Holden still here, I'm not too fussed about having a youth goalkeeper of any real note, but it would make sense to have a goalkeeper that could play in the youth setup. Although, do we consider James Holden our youth goalkeeper? Probably. So, I might not look for any sort of youth academy goalkeeper unless you guys feel like I should. But Sam Forrest with that potential window could be really good. We're not obviously good... Well, not going to commit to players that are going to be the next Kylian Mbappe because that is unrealistic for us to find that caliber of player through our youth team. But there are going to be decent amounts of uh, of youth players that could come through that might be championship standard because Cambridge United have produced a number of championship standard players in the past. Some making it to the Premier League. So we'll, uh, we'll adjust as we go through. One thing I do need to do actually is factor in uh, Joseph Vegas's uh, wages into my shortlist, which I haven't done yet, but I don't know what he's on. I imagine all youth players are on £425. I think that's how it works. I'm not sure, but regardless, I'll add Joseph Vegas to my uh, first team squad once he's completed the change to striker, and that way I can definitively know what he's on and what we're doing. Right, Blackpool away. They've got a five back as well, which is going to be frustrating. But having just come down from the league above, they are in 19th in the division, which is not good news for Blackpool Football Club. We have enacted the uh, points deduction for Wigan. We will be doing the same for Reading when the opportunity presents itself. Would you like me to implement the way the wage, the points deductions for the Premier League sides as well? Do you want me to deduct points from Forest? from Everton, etc. If you do, I will do so if you're not that bothered because we're not anywhere near that side of the, the football league right now, then I won't bother. But if you'd like me to implement that and keep it as realistic as possible in that regard, even though we're not involved in it, then I will do so. Live chat is saying yes. So we will almost certainly look to do that then. I'm going to make a couple of changes to the starting lineup. Faye is going to start this one. No burn. Through the gap to Beasley. Kick that straight against Adam May, who's knocked it straight onto his own arm, which means that we have given away a free kick here in the early stages. Hopefully they don't punish us for it. Connolly plays that short and into Byers and around the corner. And here's Casey. And there's just... Oh, that's a terrible shot. Lots of Blackpool men around and not many defenders near him. Thankfully, I didn't need any defenders near him because his shot was rubbish. If you could continue that for the rest of the game, Blackpool, that'd be lovely. Fires through the gap to Lancashire. And nicely down the line to Kouassi. Who's picked up Beasley beautifully. Oh my goodness. What a strike. What a save. That was destined for the top corner. Then that's the best save. That Stevens has made all season. For sure. Kouassi here to Norburn. Trying to lead by example as captain. And failing to do so. Giving the ball away. And this is where that pace of George Thomas can really come in handy. And it's a lovely ball to Lancaster as well. And on the breakaway here. Can Cambridge United take a 1-0 lead? No! Chance missed by Lancaster on the breakaway. Trying to find the top right-hand corner in a similar fashion to the way the Blackpool man did at the other end. But no save needed this time. Wide. Adam May does really well to win that back. Lancaster might 
look to become provider here instead this time. Finding James Brophy in the box. Oh my god, what a finish. James Brophy gives us a 1-0 lead. He's, I think, my top goal scorer this season. And in real life, I think he's only scored one goal for Cambridge United ever in like 100 games. He's scored like three this year already. He's flying. Lancaster does turn provider. And what a left-footed finish. That is into the far top corner. We're in front. Lancaster looking for Fajiri. There is plenty of space. Oh, it's a lovely ball as well to Liam Bennett. He's going to need that support to arrive. Here's George Thomas. And Lancaster, he tried once and failed. He tries a second time and is equally as wayward with his finishing. Jack, you need to improve, mate. You're going to be transfer listed next season at the very least. If no one comes in for you with a realistic transfer, then obviously those that are transfer listed IRL, we will keep. If we don't get a realistic bid for anyone. That's loose. That's poor from Blackpool. It's nice to see why they're 19th in the table at the moment. This Blackpool side are not superb here today. Carbon copy, not quite. Turn it home, not quite. George Thomas on the rebound, trying to find the narrow angle for a second goal. It just didn't work for me. Felt like I had enough of an angle there to go for a second shot rather than try and pull it back for a pass. Probably should have pulled it back for a pass. Looks like it's going to be 1-0 Cambridge United at half-time. But after losing our last game, I'd be very happy to take a 1-0 win. Thank you very much. Then again, George Thomas getting down the line. It's a good run. Now then, who can we find a defender? Okay. Like that. There we go. Adam May does well. We'll keep the pressure on. That's a check. Well, maybe a finesse. Oh, maybe a finesse! Right, okay, decision made. In future, we finesse with Jack Lancaster. We don't shoot with his laces. Goal of the season contender, get your shortlist up. Jordan Cousins has won. Goal of the season contender, Jack Lancaster has another. Outside the box, far top corner keeper pushing it further so into that postage stamp area in the stanchion. Wow, what a goal! Cambridge 2! Soleil off the bench. Good footwork from him. Gassan also entering the field of play from the substitutes bench. And not a, bob, not a bad ball in towards him either. Adam May dipping. All right, never mind. Goal of the season competition is closed. Adam May. He came from Pompey. He's the best you've ever seen. We think he's magic on number 19. We love him more each and every single day. His name is Adam. His name is Adam May. Da -da 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 That's the best goal you'll see all season. Oh my God. Passing the ball about now, Blackpool. They know the game is done. Well, three goals of high quality that just got better and better and better as the game went on. I don't think we'll quite see another goal like that Adam May one for a very long time. Although I thought that about the Lancaster one. And Adam May said, anything you can do, I can do better. Yeah. Quite a lot better, it seems. That was a goal good enough to grace any stage. Champions League final would be perfect for that calibre of finish. Cambridge 3, Blackpool 0. The relegated side at the moment threatened with going down back-to-back -back seasons. Next up for us then are the two simulated games, the first of which being Leighton Orient, recently promoted from the league below. They are now in 19th place and have drawn their last three games. So... Some defeats, as you can see, but starting to find their feet, perhaps, at this level. This is Cambridge United's third season at this level now for uh, the most recent seasons. And as you can see, we're going to have to make some changes here. And we will quick sim this one against Leighton Orient and win it by two goals to one. Gassan with a brace before Joe Piggott pulled one back for the away side. That'll do very nicely indeed. It was fellow recently promoted side Port Vale next. Wanting to remove Reading's points tally at the moment, but they have now got six points. I can finally remove Reading's points tally at the moment. Everton and Forest uh, don't have enough points for me to be able to take away the points that they have with the uh, with the, the deductions. And Reading deducted six points in real life, deducted six points in this. 
campaign. They're back down on zero. Sorry, lads. I'm going to have to fight harder to stay up. Right, Port Vale upcoming. Vegas position option change is now complete. I will implement that. So from a 51 rated left winger to a 52 rated striker. We'll train him as a target player as well. Uh, or do I train him as something slightly different? I might do poacher actually. Could take 16 weeks. We will now call him up to the senior team and add him to our list of players on the spreadsheet. And yes, £425,000 for him as well. So I believe then that every youth player that gets called up will be on £425,000, which is fine. We can add him to the spreadsheet now. I've deducted Reading's points, I've deducted Wigan's points. We just need to do Forest and Everton when they've accrued enough for me to be able to then take them away again. But we're going to push on into that next game in a moment. Port Vale with a five back as well. They're in 15th in the table, just as was the case with Leighton Orient. Not one in their last five games. Big Uche Payatsu up top, former Cambridge United man. It's a decent team that unfortunately for them was not able to survive in real life in the season just gone. Although it did go down to uh, the last couple of games for them. I had Lyle Taylor come to me and say, boss, can I play? Sure. Go on then, lad. Why not? Do me proud. It's tough because I've got three players. Well, basically, every position has someone else of a similar rating, other than Bennett at right back, that could justifiably play in that position ahead of the man that's already there. Against Port Vale, it's a 1-1 draw. Lyle Taylor did get a goal, though. So he asked to play and made the impact. It's a point for Cambridge United on this occasion. Point that keeps us in third right now. Again, it was about this stage of the season, IRL, where everything started to fall apart. So we'll see if it starts to fall apart for us. And up next, Charlton at home, which is, as you can see, they're on 17 points and in sixth. Quite a big fixture at this particular stage of the season. That's where we'll go and end today. Charlton probably up there with Derby as the two strongest sides will have played against this season so far. Freddie Ladapo up top is a great player for them. Lloyd Jones at centre-back, former Cambridge United player and very solid at centre-back he was for the two years that he was with us. Dobson in the middle with a captain's armband for them. Options on the bench as well in Michael Hector will be a, a name that you recognise from his time at Chelsea and Reading. But it's a game that with the form we've been in, I don't know whether I consider us favourites for this, but certainly we're not as out of it as you might have originally thought we might have been. Let's show up. And I tell you what, Lyle Taylor got the goal in the last game. He wanted to play. He got the game. Let's throw him on the bench. Uh, sorry, throw him into the starting lineup and give him the opportunity from the start then. And Lyle Taylor spins nicely. Looking for Soleil. Tight angle. Oh, but not tight enough! Thumping finish from Soleil Kai Kai. We're in front at the Abbey Stadium and the fans are going absolutely ballistic. Um, well, as they might well rightly do. Just sheer shot power too much for the keeper on this occasion. We're in front early doors. That's a hell of a goal. Not quite goal of the season level, but still very good. Good strength. And Alfie May. Stevens drawn into a good save. He's kept a number of clean sheets, Jack Stevens, so far this season. Which is actually, again, something that Cambridge did in real life in the first few games of the year. Actually had one of... In fact, I think at one at one point after about 15 games or so, despite start the results starting to go against Cambridge at that moment in time, we had the most amount of clean sheets of any side in the top five nations. Not just English top five leagues, the top five nations all told. Jordan Cousins makes it too! Well, is that a potential for goal of the season? Who knows? Left-footed outside the box. I'll put it on the shortlist for now, but if you guys feel like I should take it off again because of the caliber of some of the other chances, then I will do so. Let's show you a replay, though. Jordan Cousins on his left foot. Maybe that one goes in ahead of his other goal, because that's definitely better than the first time shot he had previously. We'll change that. Jordan Cousins, episode four, Charlton at home. That's beautifully done. Lyle Taylor's short, actually. And we'll spin on it. Lyle Taylor for three. Good save by Maynard in goal. Looking for a third here. I have tweaked the sliders yet further in this second half. 
to make things even more difficult for myself. We did do extensive testing of the gameplay prior to the uh, the start of the save. Obviously, as factors like form start to become a, a making an impact on the uh, the gameplay and how players are playing, etc., and overall stats, then that's going to change things yet further. So we've tweaked it again. So for reference, at the moment, I have lowered and made the AI better with their shooting and their passing. Shot errors come down from 72 to 65 and pass errors come down from 68 to 60. I'm not wanting to just ensure I get promoted or anything like that. Like, we're having a strong season and whilst it lasts, we'll enjoy it, but we will make sure that the difficulty is right. Even if it costs me a potential promotion run, it's the realistic thing to do to make the gameplay as hard as possible. Well, not as hard as possible, because then I'll lose every week and that's not entertaining. I have to factor in entertainment factor as well. But at the minute, maybe we feel like things are not quite as realistic as they could or should be. Although we did lose to Burton today, so maybe we're not far off. Thomas into Kamara. Any chance for a consolation goal for Charlton here? Seemingly not. Seemingly no. We win by two goals still at home against Charlton Athletic, but we have made significant strides in making the gameplay supposedly more difficult now. So we'll see how that pans out in tomorrow's first game, which is going to be Tottenham Hotspur. So that's going to be an intriguing factor to see where we are. I might get absolutely hammered. It's not like opposite, like 62% possession for my opposition. Basically the same amount of chances. Gameplay is always a stickler, isn't it, when it comes to realism? When I have to factor in entertaining gameplay on top of the realism factor of it as well. Uh, changing the focus of a couple of players might help. I'm quite happy with where we are right now with everything off the pitch. Perhaps we do need to tweak things with the gameplay slightly, but we can continue to do that as we progress through the save and find the sweet spot. We thought we found a sweet spot. It might not have been the sweet spot. We'll find out as time goes on. Currently in third place continually in League One after 11 games. But there's still 35 to go. So we won't get too carried away at this stage. That's for sure. Right now, though, that's all for today's episode, though. Some worldies in there. Some proper worldies in there. Our first, first Youth Scout report as well, which we will keep keen tabs on moving forward to see if there's going to be some gems in there. Thank you very much for your support today, though. Do let me know your comments in the feed or your feedback in the comments down below, and do get those questions in for the potential of kind of press conference style additions to the save as well. Thank you for your support as ever. Do join me on the stream and watch it live. F1 content coming soon to the second channel, and now probably by the time you're watching this on the uh, on the stream as well. But for today, for this YouTube save, that's all from me. I will see you tomorrow.